All right, and we are back with our first guest, uh, as you can probably see here from the overlay on the stream, uh, joining us to talk a little bit about CloudFormation Guard, not CloudFormation Guard duty, as I misspoke before, is Rahul Garg, Senior Product Manager on the AWS CloudFormation team. So Rahul, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Rob, for inviting me to the show. I'm so excited speaking to my customers. Welcome. Yeah, awesome, and we, we can see from chat that they're uh, they're very excited and they're they're tuning in from around the world. So they're they're glad to get an opportunity to to hear from you today. Um, so you know, as I alluded to, uh, we're talking about CloudFormation Guard. Um, this is a very recent launch. Uh, we talk about all sorts of different types of launches on this show, and I think the CloudFormation Guard is unique for many reasons. But I'll hand that off to you. You know, what is CloudFormation Guard? Yeah. Uh... So CloudFormation Guard is an open source CLI tool available on GitHub. So this tool helps customers to uh, provision compliant cloud resources, compliant infrastructure and application resources on AWS. And how does it uh, happen actually? So let's take two customer personas. One is a compliance administrator working in a company and the job of the compliance administrator is to make sure that the developers who are writing CloudFormation templates, they only provision compliant CloudFormation templates. Uh, so what they can do is they can write a bunch of guard rules and hand those rules over to the developers. And when developers are writing their CloudFormation templates, they can pass those rules with, the, uh, with their CloudFormation templates and check them and identify any errors. And now just to give you an example of uh, what does compliance actually mean here? For example, uh, as a compliance admin, I want to make sure that developers only provision encrypted S3 buckets. In other words, when they're writing CloudFormation templates, they turn on the encrypted flag. They should include the encrypted flag and mark it as true. Mm -hmm. So that is the kind of compliance that we are talking about here. So, so this will save when Rob and I are working on a project and I'm uh, trying to check in a CloudFormation template that has my uh, S3 buckets as wide open and public and my database has uh, default credentials. We could write rules to potentially catch this with this open source tool. Uh, absolutely. So think about it uh, that you can do it while you, you, were, you are developing uh, CloudFormation templates on your local machine. So which mm -hmm. kind of... Uh, fastens up your local dev test experience. At the same time, you can use it in your CI CD pipelines. So at the build stage, you can identify, okay, there's some problem and then which essentially stops the entire pipeline and then you can go in and fix in there. Yeah, you, I, I really like the direction that this is going in because um, this kind of thing is so hard to fix once it gets out. Right. You, you really want these processes detected as early as possible. And what you're talking about is, is if in the process of even authoring the CloudFormation template, the developer gets feedback as to whether or not this template is compliant with a set of best practice policies, uh, that just, you had me there. Uh, I want to hear yeah. more. Yeah, so uh, shift, list, shift left testing is an emerging trend. So what is that trend, as you said, while you are developing the templates, you want to put in that preventative checks in place. So instead of checking for compliance after the fact, after you have provisioned uh, the resources, isn't it better if we can do it before we have provisioned the resources? So that is where CloudFormation Guard comes in and this is all about uh, the preventative compliance story. Yeah, I dig it. Always cheaper to, to not ship a broken thing than to fix the broken thing once it's shipped, right? Yeah, and I mean, even just like the the pathway to diagnose is is a long and windy one, right? Like you figure out that data gets exfiltrated in some way, it's not trivial to know immediately. Like, oh yes, it was this you know exact part of the CloudFormation template that that infrastructure was deployed by, and then you know maybe you assume that the CloudFormation it's immutable infrastructure, so no one touched it and mangled it after the fact, right? But there's just so many layers to diagnosing and debugging where you can just catch it at the at the root all the way upstream before it's even, you know, before you even check it in, that's even better. That's, this is awesome. 
So I, I mean, yep. I'm wondering what is the what does the onboarding process look like? So like, what does a developer need to learn in the way of some sort of is there is there a policy description language that we need to use and and what does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question, Rob, and that is where the core value prop, the power of uh, CloudFormation Guard, lies in. So CloudFormation Guard provides a simple, declarative, easy to use uh, language through which you can write your CF and Guard rules. So essentially, you don't need to be a programming expert. You don't need to learn Python, Java, or Ruby, or any language. In a way, we are democratizing policy as code. So uh, because most of the time, if you think about it, uh, the compliance admin people in companies and enterprises, they don't know these programming language. And uh, that was the feedback we heard from customers. And we really pride ourselves in listening to customers, working backwards from them. And so we used, uh, we used that feedback to create this simple, easy to use language, which is just plain English. It's almost equivalent to plain English. You write your rule in plain English language, hand it over to developers, and then they run it against their CloudFormation templates. I'm, I'm going to hold you to that one, Rahul, because I'm going to not only ask you for a demo, but we'll let chat decide if uh, how they feel about that. But hopefully it's as easy as you describe it. Um, uh, you know, you, you opened up saying, you know, it helps developers be compliant, right? And and. I think a lot of us have a very particular sort of like thing that comes to mind when we think about compliance. We think about like not breaking the rules or not uh, getting in legal trouble, right? But you know, when you describe sort of like these rules that we can write, I imagine it's much more than just like a matter of, of legal policy, right? We may have these sort of like bounds on systems that we want to enforce, but we haven't had ways to do that. So like, what really is the scope of compliance that yeah. we're talking about here? Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So uh, we develop something and our customers tell us how they are using uh, a CF and Guard tool. So that's what happened to us. So what we have seen, uh, so uh, just to give you some uh, context here, we launched the preview version of CF and Guard in June this year, and we went a uh, GA yesterday. So in this three to four months period, our customers uh, use CF and Guard, came to us, showed us how they're using it, gave us some feedback. Now to answer your question. So our customers are using CF and Guard to comply to the AWS well-architected framework. Mm -hmm. And there are essentially five pillars to it. There's operational excellence, uh, cost optimization, security, reliability, and performance. So uh, S3 was an example of the security framework. Cost optimization could be a particular size of an EC2 instance or size of uh, a volume, right? or uh, that is uh, one way of doing things. The other way is uh, some, some of our customers, they operate in heavily regulated industries. For example, uh, customers in the financial sectors, they have to comply to certain uh, regulations, certain governmental regulations. And then they use CF and Guard to write those kind of compliance rules. Awesome, well, I mean, when you put it that way, it quite literally seems like any logic that you could write about you know, your AWS infrastructure that would be encapsulated in cloud formation is fair game here for writing rules around. Yeah. I don't know about you, Nick, but I can't wait to see this. Or do we have a demo ready to go that we can uh, show the folks in chat? Yeah, we can go ahead to the demo. Okay. Uh, so let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, so let's see what do we have here. So on the left-hand side, this is the cloud formation template that uh, uh, I've written. And this is the set of CF and guard rules. And we will run these rules against uh, this file. And at the bottom, I have my uh, command line prompt here. So uh, let's look at the cloud formation template here, just to get a sense of what we are dealing with. So uh, it's a very simple template. It has two resources. Uh, first is an EC2 volume, and it has certain properties such as size, uh, availability zone, tag, it's a production environment resource, 
The second resource is also an EC2 volume resource. Uh, it has its own uh, properties. It also has a resource attribute, which is deletion policy is equal to snapshot. Now uh, let's see uh, the syntax of a CFN guard rule. And I promise to you that it will uh, look like uh, similar to an English language. So, uh, so here is a sample rule here. And uh, the syntax is, so we start with the resource type. So, uh, and this resource type could be anything, anything that you, uh, it could be a private or third party resource type that you have in your CloudFormation registry. And here you have the property of this uh, resource type. And then uh, any operators that you want to operate on, on this property. So these could be or equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, and so on. And the expression value is essentially, what do you want this resource property to be? And then uh, a comment. So this is your sample rule. So essentially you want, do not want developers to create unencrypted EC2 volumes. So uh, let's go back to uh, the VS code here and let's look at the CloudFormation guard rules that we are going to run on this template. So I have defined here a variable that I'm going to reference in the rules here, uh, I have uh, used it here. So I uh, use a percentage sign to use this variable. And the second rule is uh, a conditional rule. It says that when my EC2 volume has a tag of prod, then uh, the deletion policy should be retained. And then I have a bunch of comment here. So you can see that the power of the language it enables you, uh, enables you to use a, a variable and use conditional checks. So I, I'm getting some ideas in my head here. Like I imagine writing a rule set for the, the, the parameters that matter most to your org, but then you can almost have like a separate dynamic config that gets slotted in for all of those variables. I, maybe that's at, the, at like when you were saying like your CI CD pipeline, maybe that's uh, how that's treated. Is that, am I off base there or is that how you expect people to use it? Uh, Nick, can you repeat that again? I don't think so. I get caught your question, right? Yeah. Sorry. So, you know, what I see here in this rule set is, is largely sort of two things. I see the rules that you want to check against certain parameters, which may be variables, right? So here you yeah. have, you know, like I need to check that, or I want CloudFormation Guard to check that, um, my EC2 volume satisfies an arbitrary encryption flag parameter, right? Like a value for that. And then above you define what that parameter is, right? So I almost see a world where like you could dynamically pull in maybe in a separate file where you have your configs for all those values for the rule set. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I should probably just let you finish the demo. Yeah, I think <laughs> uh, what you are alluding to, it's uh, it's something that we plan to build as uh, part of the future releases of Guard. So it's on our roadmap and we will get there. So what you're essentially saying is that if we can have uh, a bunch of parameters as a separate file and pass it to guard and then guard can use those parameters in defining the rules. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That... So uh, moving ahead uh, and just to see the capabilities, more capabilities of CF and guard, I have another rule here, uh, which says that uh, now these are the bunch of rules for cost optimization. And this rule says that the volume size should be less than equal to hundred. And then I can specify a rule using an OR construct. So volume type should either be ST1 or GP2. And then uh, I could have a rule just for the company policy, uh, something like the volume, uh, the availability zone should either be in US East 1B or 1A. And uh, the rationale behind this rule is uh, since most of uh, the customers of the application are coming from these regions. Um, developers just want to provision the volume in these AZs. Okay, now we have seen uh, 
the CFN Guard rules language, some of its capabilities. Now let's uh, run these this rule set against this CloudFormation template. So uh, let's uh, just pass. I'm just going to pass this um, help flag to CFN Guard and see what does the typical command look like. Okay, so the usage is, let me just move it up. Uh, usage is, I need to pass it uh, the rule set and the template, and there are a bunch of flags that I can pass, okay? Now, uh, okay. So what I'm doing here is uh, I'm passing CF and guard this template and this rule set, okay? Now, as you can see that it has generated a bunch of errors, there are 10 errors, uh, some errors on the second volume and some errors on the first volume. And uh, they give me explanation of why those errors occur in the first place. Let, let's look at some of them. So uh, this one is availability zone as US uh, West 2C, which is wrong because in the CF and guard rules file, we said that the resources should be created in these two AZs. Let's look at this one. Now, this one was the conditional rule. It says that, okay, uh, it should have been retained deletion policy. Okay. So yeah, uh, bunch of rules here. As a developer, the next step would be to uh, fix this template over here. Now, since we are operating in the demo environment, I'm not gonna do that right away. And instead I'm going to use this compliant template. So this is a template which has all the errors and issues removed, added a bunch of property, uh, encrypted is there, encrypted is there, AZs are fixed, my volume type is fixed. Now let's see if I pass this compliant template to CloudFormation Guard, what does it look like? Okay, now it doesn't show me any error. That's, uh, so, uh, you know, assuming it doesn't show you any errors, that would mean that, you know, cause, cause each line prior was the actual error and I'll get into something I want to comment on them in particular, but it had each incremental error and then the sum of the errors at the bottom, but this time there were no errors. So it just said, oh, nothing yeah. on the surface. Yeah, that is correct. And uh, I think our customers would also help uh, with one more functionality of CFN Guard, which is rule gen. So uh, CFN Guard is all about how we can make it uh, easier for customers to write the rules itself. And uh, although the rule writing experience is easy, customers still have to write these rules. They still have to write these one, this one line. And uh, some of our customers who have already been using CloudFormation, temp, uh, CloudFormation, they have thousands of templates. And how we can make it easier for those customers to create these rules. So uh, CFN Guard has this another functionality called rule gen. You pass a compliant CloudFormation template to rule gen and it will generate uh, uh, a bunch of rules for you that you can tweak and use it and then give it to developers. So essentially you get a base set of rules and those will not be the perfect rules, but something uh, you can tweak and work for your use case. Can we uh, see that in action? Yeah, let's, let's do that. So uh, here what I've done is instead of uh, passing check as the function to CFN guard. I'm passing rule gen and I'm giving it a compliant template. Okay. And I click on enter. So you can see that it has created five rules for me. Uh, okay. Let's just look at this one. So yeah, uh, this rule is fine. I will have to tweak it because uh, creating in uh, US East 1A. So I can just copy it, tweak it and use it. I can use this rule as it is. This this is something that I'll have to tweak. Um, just say that less than equal to 100. 
uh, this is some something that I can use directly, but will be good to add a conditional rule to it. This is something that I can use directly. Yeah, I, I think it's immensely helpful uh, for, for a bunch of reasons. But the thing that jumps out most to me is that it enables someone to go from like, hey, here is a known, uh, it doesn't even have to be gold standard, right? But like, here here is a good CloudFormation template that we use often or is reused a bunch. Now someone who is completely new to CloudFormation Guard, new to this declarative rule set language, can easily have a bunch of examples that either are usable as is directly or can be very easily modified where the difficult parts of the syntax are still generated for you and you just change some of the values of the ranges. Yeah. And uh, just so that the customers know, there is no artificial or machine uh, learning language in place that is give, going to give you the gold standard rules. It is going to uh, give you uh, the basic set of rules that you will have to tweak and uh, and then work for your use case. Awesome. We had a uh, we actually had a question in LinkedIn, uh, so I'm gonna. You know, I don't I don't know if you have the answer, but I'm going to field it anyway. Uh, in the declarative language for rule generation, you know, you have those multiple terms with the colons between them. You know, this is this is, this is common parlance for AWS RNs and resources and what have you. Uh, but some, Daniel Vindatelli Jr. from LinkedIn wants to know um, the first term says AWS. Is there in the realm of this open source project uh, a way that people could develop and fork CloudFormation Guard or, or contribute to it to be compatible for for clouds that may not be AWS? Is that I don't know if that's something that's been thought of or you know if there's any stance on the project of it, but yeah, you can actually do that. So any uh, third party resources that you provision with CloudFormation, you can uh, write rules for those resources with CloudFormation Guard. So what is Guard essentially looking for is uh, anything that goes into CloudFormation template, whether it's in JSON or YAML, you can write uh, a CFN Guard policy for that template. It doesn't have to be AWS. It could be a third-party resource. Cool. Good stuff. I, you know, I have a question around the, you're going back to this concept of detecting these kinds of issues. You call it the shift left. Um, basically moving the defect detection earlier in the dev test cycle. Um, I get that. I, what is your vision for how to uh, integrate this, this checking? So is this something that, for example, runs with your acceptance test suite? Uh, as an artifact, you know, you, you, you showed us that you can write the rule set either by hand or by using rule gen. But once you have that rule set file, isn't the intention to check that rule file rule set file into source control next to this to the cloud formation template how does how does all that work yeah so what we have seen customers doing is that uh, when they create this ci cd pipeline they will uh, have a, a source repository for the rule set and a different source repository where they are uh, they are uh, committing their cloud formation templates and that is when when they both commit them and uh, trigger the code pipeline or any other CI CD tool for that matter. And uh, then the check-in happens at the build stage and the resources get deployed. I see. But so if I understand correctly, that process will detect uh, any new changes that, that are that are emitted in the CI, CI CD pipeline. So it'll say, oh, you made this change to this template and the template is no longer in compliance with the checked-in rule set. Um, or you can make a change to the rule set file and, and, and then suddenly what it would detect is this cloud formation template sitting next to this rule set file no longer compliant. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. But, but, that, but just to be hundred percent clear, at no point will that go and say, but your deployed uh, infrastructure is out of compliance. There's, yeah, there's it, a process yeah. like that or, or is there intention to build that out? Or, or I mean, what are your thoughts on that? So what you're talking about is uh, detective capabilities. So something which has already been provisioned, how do you ensure that uh, it's compliant to your policy, your AWS well-architected framework, your regulations? So for that, we have uh, an amazing service in AWS called Config. And with Config, you can essentially achieve that. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to touch on was um, it, less of a question, just more of a talking point, but uh, in the... 
in the realm and spectrum of helpful errors in, in programming, um, just being told, hey, like you got an error on line X is one way. Then, then going a little bit deeper, it's like, well, what is the error? But in uh, when we ran the check, or I, I'm forgetting the actual method call on the CLI, but um, when we ran the, the, the CFN guard check against the template, it not only told us what policies were in violation, but what the expected values were for them. So I didn't have to go and dig through like the rule set to see what it was expecting. I didn't have to go dig into the docs and see like, oh, well, what are the, what is the shape of the values? Did I just have a syntax error or what have you? Like I felt pretty empowered right there on the CLI to, to know and make like best faith decisions about how to fix yeah. that immediately, which again, when this is all about like getting to a secure and, and compliant cloud formation template, doing it quickly, and, and not having that be painful. Um, I, I think this delivers on that like magnificently. Exactly, that's a very good observation, Nick. Uh, th there's also uh, one more plug that I want to have. And uh, so there's another open source tool that we have, it's called uh, uh, CFN Lint. Hmm. And uh, CFN Lint is a tool that is going to check your CloudFormation templates for any kind of uh, best practices errors, any syntax errors. So uh, just want to make sure that uh, our customers understand both the open source tools. You, you have Linter, which is going to check for best practices and syntax errors. And you have Guard, through which you can write uh, your custom policy as code and check for compliance. So we have seen that uh, these tools complement each other really well. And most of our customers uh, run their CloudFormation templates first with CF and Lint and then with CFN Guard. Going uh, an even further step to the left in the dev test cycle, you know, uh, infrastructure as code, a hot space recently, lots of really exciting tools. Uh, the CDK, the Cloud Development Kit, certainly one of them. Uh, a lot of people are really enjoying that because it helps them sort of declaratively write cloud formation and, and, and these, uh, or the output ends up being cloud formation templates. So uh, in a world in which people are using TypeScript and Python to declaratively generate their CloudFormation templates, how does that play with CloudFormation Guard? Do people you know, generate their CloudFormation and then run a check against that using Guard? Yeah, uh, so CDK uh, is a tool that is built on top of CloudFormation. So it is using uh, CloudFormation under the hoods. So when, you, when our customers use CDK, they eventually create a CloudFormation template and then what customers can do is they can run CF and guard on those templates. Awesome. Yeah. We, we actually had one question from Twitch chat uh, from dev oopsie, uh, quite a fitting name. Uh, does this as in like cloud formation guard use config in the background or is it totally separate? I mean, uh, I, I imagine no, because, because cloud formation guard is an open source tool and config is a you know managed service within the console, but. Yeah, and uh, your, your hunch is right. It doesn't use uh, config in the background. It is something that you install on your local machine. Awesome. Well, uh, chat, any other questions? Otherwise, I think uh, this, is, this has been pretty enlightening for me. Uh, so, t you know, while, while we're waiting for any of those, those questions to come in, uh, you said this is open source. I'm imagining it's on GitHub. Yeah, I see the link right there. If people want to get started, easiest path to do that is just check out the repo and uh, clone and install it from there. Yeah, uh, so as part of the GA, we made uh, CFN Guard available on Chocolatey for our uh, customers using Windows OS and on Homebrew for our customers using Mac uh, OS. So they can go download, download it from there and uh, start using it. Awesome. Well, uh, with that, I think we're... Uh... Hitting up against the end of this this first demo then. Oh, we've got one final question. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a liar. Uh, Satout09 from Twitch wants to know, uh, can this be turned into a testing tool for CloudFormation? Maybe I don't, maybe that's uh, that's exactly what this is, or maybe you can you know develop some scripting on top of this. Um, that's interesting, actually. Uh, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> we'll need to uh, think more about it, whether we want to build something like this, but... Yeah, that's a good uh, requirement. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll think about it, whether we can do it or not. 
Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, right, we talk a lot at AWS about customer choice. We don't want to feel like we're locking people in prescriptively to have only one way to do something. So there's a world I'd imagine in which, you know, there, there are additional ways to test uh, that are built into CloudFormation Guard and then some other further testing features that could get built into CloudFormation in the AWS console, right? So pick yeah. your pick your poison. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Rahul, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, I know a lot of folks in the chat appreciated the time and the the demo, especially. I uh, am, am glad to be able to see this again. You know, launch post, go, launch blog post goes out, but seeing it in action is always just another level of uh, understanding that I feel I can get to so much quicker when seeing someone uh, show it to me. So thank you again for all the time. Thanks for having me on the show. It was lovely speaking to you and the customers. Awesome. Well, with that, we're going to close out this first deep dive. We've got one more lined up, uh, equally as exciting. Uh, hang tight. We'll be right back.